Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, this is part of the War in Heaven, War on Earth series. I don't remember what number, uh, but it is the war on earth. Now, there was war in heaven. Satan got kicked out. And he came to earth. And what was the first thing he did recorded in the Bible? Well, in Genesis chapter 3, he talked to Eve and told her that God was a liar, basically, and questioned, uh, had her question in her mind what God had said. God had said, you know, not to touch the tree of good and evil lest ye die. And I'm paraphrasing because I don't want to make this an hour study because we've I've covered that so many other times. But uh, the deal is Satan comes along and he says, nah, you're not, you shall, you shall not surely die. You know, when you, when you do the thing that he says not to do, your eyes are going to be open and you're going to be like gods. So he basically called God a liar, basically said, you know, the Lord's holding you back. Yeah, because when you do what he says not to do, you're going to be like gods, knowing good and evil. And that's the uh, theme, basically. Try they, the, the occult tries to give you hidden, what they call hidden wisdom, hidden powers. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, Harry Potter and his magic wand, or uh, let's see, if you watch Teen Titans, uh, Raven, um, you know, uh, witchcraft is just so common on television. It's just amazing. Uh, so they always try to offer you hidden knowledge. Now, here's the deal. They will actually tell people that the reason Satan's still around is because God can't kill him. He can't get rid of him. Yeah, they actually teach that. And they actually believe that if they have enough people following the devil, that they can get rid of God. Well, it didn't work the first time. It's not going to work the last time. Sorry. But uh, uh, God's job is secure. That job's already been filled. Sorry, Satan, but uh, ain't going to happen. All right, so now the fallen angels come to earth. And what did they try to do? They tried to destroy the seed line. Now let's take a look at something. Let's take a look at Ezra chapter 9. Ezra was the, if I remember, the Levitical priest that came out of Babylon after the fall of Babylon and returned to Jerusalem. The Medes and the Persians, which their descendants are modern-day Iran, allowed them to go back to Jerusalem with all the furniture of the temple and all the implements and cups and everything else, all the gold, and allowed them to rebuild Jerusalem after the seven years, 70 year captivity. So let's read Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not, have not separated themselves, have not separated themselves. From the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Now, in the previous studies, I believe that I sufficiently proved that these people were the descendants of Ham and Canaan. 
And they were cursed. They were part of the fallen angels. The Hittites, um, among others, that's who Esau married into. Now, the Philistines were the giants. They were part of the Canaanite families. However, I should point out that not all the Canaanites were giants. There were some Canaanites that came to Joshua and pretended that they were people from a far country and asked him to make a pact or a league with him, an agreement. And Joshua didn't inquire of the Lord, and he made a promise to them that uh, they wouldn't hurt him. And it didn't work out well for Joshua, but... Uh, you know, so the thing is, listen to this, verse 2. For they, the children of Israel, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves. In other words, the children of Israel took the daughters of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Not good. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, so that the holy, H-O-L-Y, seed, we're not talking about an apple tree here, people, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have hath been chief in this trespass. They intermarried with them. God said not to do it, but they did it anyways. Verse 3, And when I heard this thing, I rent, tore, I rent my garment and my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head. He pulled his hair out, people! Have you ever heard that expression? I think I'm going to pull my hair out if I don't get uh, this problem solved. And plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. Uh, you know what their solution was? Well, you could read the next couple chapters. The solution was to separate, to, to take your foreign wives and your foreign children and cast them out of your house. Leave. Divorce. That was the solution. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you know... Any group of people that call themselves Canaanites today? No. Now, if these people intermarried with Israel, let's say they intermarried with the tribe of Judah, what would they call themselves? Are they going to call themselves Canaanites? No. What are they going to call themselves? Oh, well, we're Israel. Wouldn't isn't wouldn't that doesn't that wouldn't that make sense? I mean, that's what, if I was the devil, that's what I would have them do. So, separation. That's what God said to do. Well, that's what Ezra, yeah, it was the solution. All right. So, let's take a look at something. Now, listen to this prophecy. This was a prophecy for our people. Go to Joshua. And uh, the Yeshua crowd will uh, tell you that, oh, you're pronouncing that wrong. Uh, it's really Yeshua. No, I think it's Joshua. I, th I think the people that translated the Bible had it right. All these people that correct the Bible, um, I say, go to hell. That's what I say, because that's going to probably end up being their ultimate destination. They're devils. Joshua 23. Now, Joshua does have reference to salvation. And what did Joshua do? I mean, you know, when Moses died, Moses was up on the mountain getting ready to cross the, uh, the Jordan to go in the land, but because he was disobeyed, something with the Lord. The Lord says, well, you can see the promised land, but you're not going in. So he died, but it was Joshua that took over for Moses. And Joshua has reference to salvation. And I don't think it's Yeshua. I'm sorry. 
All right, so Joshua chapter 23. And by the way, uh, Yeshua and Joshua um, it doesn't appear in the New Testament anywhere that I know of. All right, verse 11. Joshua is getting ready to die, and he's giving everybody uh, a farewell speech. Verse 11, take good heed, therefore unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. Good advice. Verse 12, else, if ye do in any wise go back. Go back to where? Go back to your evil, wicked, sinful ways. You know, backsliding, right? Else, if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations... What nations? The Canaanite nations, people. Even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them. Oh, and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you. Listen carefully. Here's the punchline. 13. You know, 13 in the Bible is usually, I've never seen 13 be a good number. Uh, you know, it's like 1, 3, 5, 7, 10, 12, 24, 40. Those are usually, that I've, to my knowledge, are good numbers. Uh, 6, 9, 11, 13, bad numbers. Uh, usually associated with something bad. So here it is. You got Joshua 23, 13. Listen carefully. Know for a certainty. All right. Now, he's talking about if you go back and you cleave to the, the, the Canaanites, and you make marriages with them. Verse 13, Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. What nations? The Canaanites. But they shall be snares. What's a snare? It's a, it's a type of trap. But they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes. What happens when you get a thorn in your eye? You turn blind, people. And thorns in your eyes until ye perish, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. God's telling you, stay away from these people. Don't get married to them. Because if you do, they're going to be a trap. They're going to be scourges in your sides, thorns in your eyes, and you're going to die from off this good land which God has given you. Uh, that's a prophecy, people, and a warning. And what did we just read in Ezra? They married the people that they were told not to. They must have been, Canaanites must have really been attractive. I mean, after all, fallen angels, right? Uh, they must have really been attractive because the men, you know, like Samson. Look at Samson. Samson went and ran after, uh, he was always looking after those heathen women. And his parents even asked him, isn't there anybody among our own people that you like? Nope. Nope, never. He didn't find any. I guess, I, I guess the Canaanites were probably gorgeous. Oh, wait, we're going to cover some of that, right? Verse 14. So Joshua says, And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. In other words, I'm getting ready to die. And ye shall know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord, which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. All right, so... God said, don't do it. You're going to die if you do. Um, but they did anyways. So let's take a look. All right, let's go to, I guess we'll go to 1 Chronicles chapter 20. There's a reason why I'm doing this. Uh, let's see. All right, let's read. First Chronicles chapter 20, uh, verse 1. And it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time that kings go out to battle, 
probably the spring. You know, you don't want to go fighting in the winter. Uh, you know, Joab led forth the power of the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon and came and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried at Jerusalem, and Joab smote Rabbah and destroyed it. And David took the crown of their king from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold. And there were precious stones in it, and it was set upon David's head. And he brought also exceeding much spoil out of the city. And he brought out the people that were in it and cut them with saws. He cut them up, people, and with heralds of iron and with axes. Even so dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon, and David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. And people say, oh, God is such a cruel and evil God. He told the Israelites to exterminate the Canaanites. Uh, yeah. And, and then they'll tell you, well, you know, now God changed his mind. Jesus came and, and, and he has compassion on everybody. He just loves everybody and wants everybody to be saved. Uh, well, let's go to Chronicles verse 4. And it came to pass after this that there arose war, war at Gezer with the Philistines. Remember, the Philistines were a tribe of the Canaanites, at which time Sibichai the Hushathite slew Sipei, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. And there was war, war again with the Philistines. And El Hanan, the son of Jar, slew Lamhi, the brother of Goliath. Ah, did you know bro uh, Goliath had a brother? Slew Lam Lami, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, whose spear shaft was like a weaver's beam. Now here's the punchline. And yet again, there was war at Gath. Now remember, these are the, the giants, the, the Philistines. Um, and yet again, there was war at Gath. Where was a man of great stature, he was a giant, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was the son of the giant. Did you catch that? Six fingers, six toes. And he was of the giants. Verse 7. But when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, David's brother, slew him. These were born unto the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. All right, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 21. Verse 18. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 18. And it came to pass after, the, the, after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibichai the Hushathite slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines where Elhanan, the son of Jarorigam, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers, six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant." Huh. Six fingers, six toes. Six, 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 anybody? Anybody? Now, check this out. I do not know how true this is, but I was checking out the list of 
famous celebrities with six toes. Now, some of them allegedly had their extra toes removed surgically. But, uh, and then there's news sources that say, yes, they do. And then there's news sources that say, no, that's, that's not true. You know, when Christians start getting close to the truth, it's, uh, it's time for the um, disinformation to come out. So, who had six fingers and six toes? Well, six toes. Well, according to some, Marilyn Monroe. Okay. Marilyn Monroe. Why was she such a media darling? And then there's Kim the Kardashian. That's for you Trekkies out there. Kim the Kardashian, right? Halle Berry. Uh, I think one magazine called her the most beautiful, sexiest woman in the world. Uh, Kate Hudson. I've heard her name. I wouldn't even know her if she knocked on my door. Ellen Pompeo. Pompeo? Pompeo? P-O-M-P-E-O? I heard she's a famous actress on some movie ser TV series or something garbage. I don't know. I don't watch TV. And then there's Oprah Winfrey. Wow. Does that surprise you? Uh, on my Bit Shoot channel and Bright Eon channel, which uh, if I ever get deleted from YouTube, uh, find me on Bit Shoot, B I T C H U T E, and uh, Bright Eon. I've got a video of Oprah saying that racists just, they have just have to die. It was an interview in the United Kingdom. And she said, yeah, racists, they just have to die. And of course, she's not talking about blacks. No. I think you could figure that out. And guys, if you know who Dan Garcia is, a boxer, I don't know who he is. But uh, he's got six toes, too. So, does that surprise anybody? The tribe helps their own. So... You know, that's the thing. These people, they exist. You know, war on earth, the satanic seed line. You know, in, uh, in Ezra, you know, it talked about the holy seed. If there's a holy seed, there has to be an unholy seed. It just, you know, that's just the way it is. It's, you know, really. I mean, what can I tell you? So Israel was to be the holy seed, and then these others, well, they're the, the unholy seed. So what can I tell you? Marilyn, Kim, Hallie, Kate, Ellen, Oprah, what can I tell you? All right, so just remember, uh, you know, there's, I bet you... Uh, Oh, not that I'm a betting person, but, you know, as an expression. But uh, don't be surprised when Judgment Day comes that you find out that uh, every presidential candidate from Lyndon Johnson in the mid-1960s all the way to now, possibly with the exception of Nixon, uh, were of the satanic seed line. I, I don't know. I think so. Uh, you know, honestly, Nixon <laughs> Nixon did a an interview. Well, he was with uh, Billy Graham and warned him about the you know who's the tribe, how they were in control of the media, and he was wanting to break their grip. Uh, next thing you know, he's uh, in big trouble. Watergate. I kind of want I kind of believe that Nixon was part of the deal but then he had a change of heart when he saw that how the country was going to be destroyed and try to save the country but uh it was too much. I don't know. That's kind of my opinion. I could be wrong. You know, I don't know. Who who does really know other than the Lord and 
you know, Richard Nixon. But uh, I didn't like him at the time. But uh, the more I researched him, I honestly think that he tried to get America back on course. But, uh, of course, America's judgment and persecution will wake up the church. There will be a remnant. But, you know, right now, people are enjoying their soap operas, their ball games, their bass boats. Uh, you know, they got food in their belly every day. I mean, even people that are not doing very well in America are far better off than people in places like India. You know, I've heard in India um, about 3,000 people a day on average die of starvation and India is a very large exporter of rice yeah they take the rice and instead of feeding their people uh, they sell it make money and let their people starve yeah and uh, you know the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked you know, and that's it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And the answer is God. So, um, I'm not sure. I, I might be paraphrasing, but... All right, well, uh, just remember, people, Hollywood is full of this stuff. But so is Washington, D.C. And you know what? D.C. stands for the District of Columbia. Everybody thinks Columbia is, you know, name of a country, right? Actually, Columbia is the name of a goddess. Um, she has many different names. Easter uh, is one of her names. Ishtar has reference to uh, Tammuz and uh, the, the uh, you-know-whos call her Lilith. So, and then the Hebrew root sacred name people are, they call her the Shekinah. Yeah, the goddess, God's wife. You know, you got God the father, God the wife, and then they get together and they have the son. That's what they want us to believe. So when you hear Shekinah, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, I think I'm spelling that right, the Shekinah, they'll tell you, oh, well, that's the glory of God. It's the goddess, people. It's the goddess. It's They're saying that uh, it's the Holy Spirit is God's wife. That's, that is, it's Kab, Kab Allah. Kab Allah. Yeah, and it comes from the tribe. What can I tell you? All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.